Cover Design Studio. In this video, we walk you through downloading GIMP and using it to design your CreateSpace cover. You'll also learn how to prepare the files for submission to CreateSpace, and at the end of the video, we'll show you how to make a quick Kindle cover as well. To design your cover, you'll need three things. A design file from CoverDesignStudio.com, your manuscript's copyright page, and GIMP, which you can download by going to CNET, Com or going to our website and clicking the Instructions tab. Then click the red button. And you can see GIMP's pretty popular on CNET. It's had over 3 million downloads and it's been reviewed by hundreds and hundreds of reviewers. Go ahead and click Download. And then click Save. And we'll wait just a moment while that saves to the computer. This can take a minute or two. Once it's finished, you're going to need to click on the file and click Run. Then click Yes. Pick your language and click OK and then click Install. The install can take up to several minutes and you may need to wait a few minutes while this installs itself on your computer. So once it's finally downloaded, click Finish. And then you'll need to locate the file on your computer and open up the program. And I'll expand this to be full size. Go to File Open to locate the file you downloaded from the website. Once you find the correct folder, the file is going to be something that says at the very end of it, front.xcf. Once you've located that, open it up, and you should have your book cover here. So what you'll need to make this work are the tools on the left and then the layers on the right. And if you don't have those, you can go to Windows and select Toolbox or to dock Dockable Dialogs, Tool Options, and Layers to get those to show up. And then up at the top here, this ruler, if this is not in inches, you can change that down at the bottom here. You can see I can toggle between pixels and inches, which is what it's, it's in pixels now. So I'll change that to inches. And some of you may see a line running down the middle. That's just a guide. It won't be printed, but if it's a nuisance to you, you can make it invisible. Just go to view and go to show guides and that'll disappear. So next we'll go to File, Save As, and rename this the name of our book. We'll create a new file that's our working file. So I'm going to leave the word front at the end of this, but erase everything else and just write the star namer. That'll be the name of the book. So it says the star namer front. And you'll want that word front on there. We'll use it later. So you can click Save. So over on the right, we have all of our text elements. They're separate layers that correspond to a text element on the page. And when you select it, you can usually see where it is on the page. So select the text tool on the left, the capital A, and make sure anti-aliasing is checked. And that's the tool we'll use to modify the text. But first, go find the layer that says copyright notice and try to locate it on your page. Sometimes it's a little hard to find. Mine looks like it's buried down here in this green section. It says copyright notice, copy and paste into your book's copyright page, quote, original and modified cover art by artist name and coverdesignstudio.com, end quote. Click inside there and select the portion that's inside the quotations and then right click and copy, or you can go edit copy. And then open up your book's manuscript and go to the copyright page so that you can paste that portion in and now you've satisfied the copyright requirement for your cover design. I also like to make sure the text inside here that I've just pasted is the same typeface and point size as the rest of the text on my page. But then I can hit save and close. We don't want that copyright notice showing up on our final printed version, so we'll go up to that layer in the layers panel and click the eye, and that'll make it invisible. And now we're ready to start changing and customizing the text uh, for the book. So locate the layer that corresponds with the title section. You can see we have two different layers because we have two different sizes of text, large and small. 
This book is going to be called The Star Namer, so I'll leave that first word in place and change the other two. If I didn't want that word, I could just omit it, or if I wanted it to be something other than the, I would change it in the same way. So let's go up to the top, and we'll just work our way down wherever this takes us. It looks like this first one corresponds with the author name. I'm Stacy Vanderpaul, so I'll write that in. The next one is declarative statement. We'll change that to the definitive guide. The next one looks like it's down here, information about the author. I'll change that to say that I'm a night sky gazer and star naming expert. So the next one is the copyright notice, which we already took care of. And this layer corresponds to a quote or a blurb, an endorsement. I don't have anything like that, so it's going to be descriptive text, which is just as good. This says everything you need to know about naming your own stars, including a list of recommended organizations. Okay, the next layer is where the subtitle goes, or you can put more, oops, I'm going to make a correction there more descriptive text. Um, if you don't have a subtitle or if it's not suitable for your particular cover design, you can put something like a tagline like this one or something more descriptive. Okay, we have that, we have that. The last text box is this here in the starburst. Now, most of our designs don't have these, but if yours does, we'll show you how to change it. This is where you can put an award that your book won or has been nominated for. And this book doesn't have that, so I'm going to put something else. The most complete resource on the topic. And I like to see this text rotated so that it looks a little bit more like a sticker. So I'm going to click the rotate tool here in the toolbox. And I can use this bar to rotate the text in either direction. So I'm going to leave it about like so, so that as the reader finishes reading it, their name heads toward the title. And once you click rotate, the text can no longer be changed or edited, so make sure you've done your spell checking and proofreading first. And I can see that this text isn't quite centered, so I'm gonna select the move tool and select move text with layer, active layer. And by doing that, I can move the text around and get it centered better. And you can do that with any of the text on the page if you just select the layer. I can see actually the subtitle area is off center as well. Okay, so that was easy enough, but let's say that for some reason this cover didn't exactly work for you. For example, let's say that the author name you're working with is longer than what was really meant for this particular design. I'll go back and select the text tool. But let's say the name is Jonathan Lee Vanderpoel instead of Stacy. We can see when we look at it that the name is sort of pushing out to the margins of the page and really taking up more space than it was meant to in the original design. So if we click on that layer and highlight what we want to change, we can go over to the letter spacing and either reduce or increase our letter spacing. And you can see that this brings the letters a little closer together so that they fit more nicely on the page. And conversely, you could do that with a name that was too short. You could space the letters out further so that it takes up more room. You can also do this with your title. You can stretch it out or scrunch it together. And I'm going to go edit undo and put the title back to where it was. And you can, you can go edit undo on anything that you've done that you want to take a step back. So once you've customized it to your liking and proofread it and spell check it, go ahead and save your work. And then we're going to make another file with embedded fonts. So we'll go file, save as, and this one will just add the word embed to the end of the title. So it says the star name or front embed, and you can click save. Now to actually embed the fonts in this new file, we're going to go to Image, Flatten Image. 
And once we click that, you can see that our image has flattened into a single image and all the fonts are embedded. So we'll go File, Save. And now it's time to address the back cover. To do that, go File, Open. And in that same folder, locate the file that at the end of it says back.xcf. There's the spine, here's the back. And when we make this one smaller, actually I'm going to tuck it behind. We don't need it for right now, but we will need it later. We'll move the back cover over. And the way you customize the back is the same way you did the front by clicking on each layer and using the text tool to change the text. So we're not going to do that again here. We also have for you two icons on the back covers, a Facebook and a Twitter icon that you can use if you have a Facebook or a Twitter address. And we also have text layers that you can customize for your own addresses. You'll also notice that these layers are linked and that's so when you select the Move tool, they all move together. So if you wanted to move them, say, we'll select the Move tool here. If you want to move them closer to your text or further from the text, you can move them as a single unit. If you don't want them linked, you just click the little link and they unlink and they relink. If you don't want to use them, you can click the eye to make them invisible, just like we did with the copyright page, and you can can disappear all of them or just one of them. Just like we did on the front cover, you'll want to go File, Save As, and rename this file the name of your book. So this one will say the star namer back and click Save. After you've made all your changes, you'll save your work and then you'll go File, Save As to create an embedded file. And that one will be named Embed at the end of it. And we can click Save. And like the other one, we'll go ahead and actually embed these layers by going to Image, Flatten Image. And we can see that our layers have flattened into a single image. So go File, Save, and then the next thing we need to do is work on the spine. And we'll do that by going to File, Open. And in that same folder, locate the one that says Spine.xcf. So it's turned the wrong way, but this is only temporary. Go to the text tool, make sure you have the A selected, and you can change the book name and you can change the author name. So we have the star namer, and I'll put in Stacy Vanderpaul. And on this one, we're not going to embed the image and we're not going to flatten it, and you'll see why in a minute. But we will go ahead and save it. So we can go File, Save As, and this will be the star namer spine. And you can click Save. So now we have all of our components and we just need the template on which to put these pieces together. So we need to go to createspace.com or you can get to it uh, using our website at coverdesignstudio.com and click on the instructions page, the instructions tab, and click this blue box here and it'll take you right to the CreateSpace book cover template. These are really easy to use, they're free, and you don't even have to be a CreateSpace customer to use them. So we're big fans. So let's customize this. It's gonna be a seven by 10 black and white with 200 pages. We'll click Build Template. We'll click here to download. Click Save File, OK. And then we'll go ahead and click on the file. It'll pull up a folder, which we have to keep clicking into until we come to two files, and an Acrobat and a PNG. The PNG is the one we're interested in. So I'm going to minimize this so that I can drag this PNG file right onto my desktop where it'll be easy to find. And we can close this folder. And I'm going to go back to my GIMP files and go to File Open on one of them. doesn't really matter which one. Go to my desktop and locate that .png file. It's right here. So I'll open that up. And now we have a great template that we can put, put all of our pieces together on and submit it to CreateSpace. 
So click on your, the file that contains your back cover, the flattened one, and go edit copy, and go back to the template, and just go edit paste. And you'll see your back cover there. We can switch to the move tool right here and make sure move the active layer is selected right here. We'll select that layer and now we can move it around on the template. So the idea on these templates is to cover all of the orange edges on the outside and then on the inside to push it right up to the dotted line. So we'll move this so it's just covering the edges. And then I need to change to the scale tool, which is right here. And this will allow me to sort of stretch and pull it into position. And I don't want to use this, so I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to do it manually. So with my tool, I'm going to pull it all the way to the dotted lines on the inside near the spine and then scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to pull it down to the bottom edge. And once I have it in place, I hit return and this happens and we just wait for the scaling to finish and it'll go back to where I wanted it. Great. And actually, before we go any further, let's go to file save as and rename this template the name of our book. So this will be the star namer and I'll call it full spread. That lets me know that this has everything. And then we can click save. And now we can do the front. So we'll minimize the back cover here and on the front go to edit copy. Back on the template file we want to click create a new layer right here. And it doesn't matter what we name it, you can just click OK. And then we can go edit paste. And we'll adjust the front cover the same as the back. Start by selecting the Move tool. And moving it so it covers just the edges of the orange. There we go. And then to adjust it from here, I need to select the Scale tool. And I'll click on it and I'll just pull it. I want to push it back up. We'll pull it to the dotted lines. I can move this out of the way. And then I'm going to scroll up. I really like to be zoomed in so that I can make sure that I'm covering up that orange just so. And then I'll hit return and wait for the scaling. And it should go right where I put it. Yep. And before we do our spine, let's go ahead and save changes. So go file, save. And then we'll click to the spine and click the capital A to select the text tool and go inside and actually highlight this text layer. Go edit copy or right click copy and click once and then right click paste onto the template. Go back to the spine file to grab the background. We'll click the eyeball to make the text layer invisible and click on the background layer. Then go to edit copy Go back to your template and first create a new layer again right here and click OK. And then go Edit Paste. So we can see our spine, but it's clearly going the wrong direction. Um, so we need to go to the Rotate tool and rotate it vertically. And then we can line it up where it goes on the spine. The same way we did before, we can slide this to rotate it 90 degrees and then we'll make a slight manual adjustment here and click Rotate. Then we can click the Move tool and move it into place. And right now it doesn't matter how wide it is, we're going to adjust that later. So we'll scroll down and we need to also select the Scale tool so we can stretch it all the way to the bottom. And I also like to stretch it fairly wide just so there's no risk of, of a skinny little line showing up on my printed version. To move this layer underneath our front and back cover, we need to go up to the top in the Layers panel and click on the spine. It'll say Floating Layer. And then right-click 
and click to new layer and that'll merge it with that new layer that we created. Then we're going to go to the down arrow button. This will enable you to move this layer so that it sits down underneath the other layers. So you just keep hitting that button until that layer is sitting right above the Create Space template. Next is the spine text. Now once we rotate our spine text, it will no longer be editable. So let's make sure that it's right. And I actually forgot that I changed the name to Jonathan Lee. So I'll select that layer and I need to select the text tool so that I can change the author name. Jonathan Lee Vanderpool. Now, like I said, once it's rotated, it can't be edited. So what we'll do is over in the layers panel, we're gonna make a duplicate layer. And you can do that by right clicking and clicking duplicate layer. So now we have two of them in case we need to change one later. So with one of them selected, let's click the rotate tool. And just like before, we're gonna rotate this 90 degrees. And once we click rotate, that text can't be changed. So we'll click the move tool and move it into place. If your text happens to be white, you can change temporarily the color of that text to black while you take care of this task. So temporarily, we're gonna go ahead and make the color of the spine invisible so that we can see the template underneath it. That way we can line up our text uh, to make sure that it's centered and we have to make sure that none of the text is actually touching any of the orange lines. So when we've got it straight, we can turn the spine color back on by clicking the eyeball and that's how we turn it on and off. And if we know we don't want to make any changes to the spine text, then we also want to make invisible that extra layer that we created that was still editable. Optionally, you can click the eyeball on the template layer to make that disappear as well. And now we need to embed all these layers like we've done before. So we'll go File, Save As to create a new file that's embedded. We'll write the word embed at the back of this and click Save. And now we need to actually embed these layers. So we'll go Image, Flatten Image, and you can see all the layers have been embedded into one. To create the PDF for CreateSpace, we go to File, Export, and change this extension right here from whatever it says to say PDF. And down here, we're also gonna select PDF. and then click Export. And then it doesn't matter if we have these boxes checked because we've already embedded everything, so we can just click Export again. And now GIMP has created a PDF file for you that you can submit to CreateSpace for your cover design. If you'd like to make a Kindle cover as well, the rest of the video is for you. You'll need to open your flattened front cover that we made earlier. And then you're going to go to File, Save As, and rename this as a Kindle. So I'm going to take off the part that says Front Embed, and I'm going to type Kindle. And that way I can keep all my files straight. So I'll click Save. And to ensure this meets the Kindle guidelines, I'm going to go to Image, Scale Image, because I need to change the size just a little bit. So once I'm in scale image, make sure that this box here says pixel, should say PX, and this link chain right here is linked and not broken, and you can just change it by clicking on it. So click inside the height box and type 2000. And when you click inside the width box, it should automatically change. And you're good to go, click scale. Now we need to make a JPEG that can be submitted to the Amazon Kindle platform. So let's save our work so far, and then go File Export. And we'll change the extension here from whatever it says to say JPG for JPEG, and down below we'll select JPEG. 
and click Export. And we want the highest quality possible, so we'll move this up to 100 and click Export again. Now we have a JPEG file that can be submitted for your Kindle cover.